Hi, I'm Michael Purdy. Welcome to WorldPPG.com. We're here with um, Mike from Paratoys, Mike Robinson. Mike, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Good, good. All right, so we have a new motor. Uh, actually, it's we not do. a new motor. It's uh, It's been around for a while. It's the HE120. Correct. Okay, so tell us about that. You, uh, um, you're importing them, as I understand it? Uh, well, we're buying them from the factory. Right. And uh, we've been flying it since uh, sometime last December. And uh, we've been really happy with it and decided that uh, now was the time to proceed with the uh, purchase of, of the HE-120s. We're right. calling it the Blackhawk R- R120. Right. And, and that and, motor's uh, been around for a while, so it's uh, the bugs are clearly worked out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, it's a 9,700 RPM engine, and it runs very, very strong. Right. Um, and what's the history of this engine? Is this uh, related to an offshoot of the old Top 80? Is it similar to that? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, Not a good question. All right. It's, I don't know uh, the answer to that. But everybody's raving about this motor. Um, it's light, has lots of power. It fills in kind of the, the Blackhawk line. Um, tell us about that. How does it fit into everything else? And who, who would be a good candidate for this motor? Well, the MZ100, for instance, has just been a fantastic engine. Uh, it very durable, starts first pull every time, very quiet, just flat out really dependable. It's been a good motor. But when you get up to the 160, 165 pound range, uh, it was just lacking a little bit and left us with a gap. Right. Uh, so, like I said, I started flying the 120 in December, uh, worked with HE, and they've made some changes to the motor. Um, we've got uh, significant uh, RPMs generated, uh, as well as horsepower now. Uh, right. We're running a 49-inch prop, and we're getting about 129 pounds of thrust. That's Which a is bunch. really impressive. Yeah, for yeah. that size. So it's light? Light and powerful. What more can you we want? We had a Reliable. guy 215. Yeah, we had a guy 215 pounds yesterday uh, fly it uh, without any problem. And I'm not saying it at 215, you're not stretching it, but he got off the ground quite quickly and had a great time and was really quite surprised. He's uh, a 172 uh, pilot uh, flying a uh, what do you fly a 28 uh, momentum glider, which he flew for the first time as well. Right. And uh, so it's 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 more like a 100 machine. It doesn't have a clutch. It has a clutch or it doesn't have a clutch? Yes, it does. It, uh. Yes, it has a clutch. It's a uh, gear drive, uh, clockwise rotation. Right. And uh, it has a centrifugal clutch in it. Right. And, and it, uh, that works very well. Um, it's easy. It also has the, the uh, Walboro WG8 carburetor on it. And I'm pretty impressed with that carburetor. It has a choke that we've never used, but it has a choke. And uh, uh, it spools up really quick. It's, it's, yeah, this motor is very, very responsive. Um, there's not much lag between when I add throttle and uh, the clutch kicks in and, and I take right. off. That's good because with the clutch and everything else, sometimes it takes a little bit. Um, how is this? To, can you start it on the back the same as you, you could with the 100? Yes. Yes, it can be mounted right or left. It's not a problem. Um, and it starts first pull every time. So it's kind of a no-brainer. It's pretty easy. If you, the starting procedure for this motor is, is you lean it over with the carburetor pointing down and you blow through the tube at the same time to press the diaphragm. And when you hear gas going into the carburetor, stop, hold it there for about 10 seconds, tilt it straight up and one pull and, and away you go. Yeah. We're looking at, I've zoomed in on the, on the motor right now, we're looking at that. It uh, it's it's nice looking. Yeah, it's very good looking. Uh, it's about forty seven and a half pounds, mm-hmm. so it's it's quite light. Uh, the black exhaust that you see there, we are now ceramic coating those exhausts, um, so it really looks even nicer. But uh, we're, we're we're quite happy. Um, Mike Hay has been building the props for us and and, and doing a good job. Right, that's uh, a pretty a looking prop. Inch prop. What color is the uh, is the exhaust? What color are you painting them? 
uh, they're ceramic. Oh, so like it's a, that grayish sort of cream, cream color. color now. Yeah. No, it's it looks like chrome. Oh, what am I thinking of? Um, hmm. And what is it, what are the advantages of that? It looks better and cleaner. Is it? Are there other advantages? It virtually do, doesn't rust. You know, right. it holds up. It stays looking looking good. Right. We, we've ceramic coated the MZs thirty uh, fours now for a while and been very very happy with them. I, you know, you spend a lot of money for this gear, and, and I want it to look good a year later. I don't want to see faded out black paint, paint peeling off. Right. You know, um, which is why I really press for seeing, seeing, you know, of, of all these engine components and moving away from the cast. It's it's six times stronger. It's lighter. And I think it looks better. Yeah. For you. And I like your attitude about all that stuff. So what else? Any other uh, any other thoughts on that, on the engine? On the on the motor itself? Yeah. They come in as, as a package. Uh, you have a separate package just for that. Oh, Yes. Yes, and then all that's on the website. Uh, the motor's been a huge seller. We've sold 10 in, in I think, two weeks. Wow, good so, for you. So uh, it's very popular, and, and uh, those sales have been to Australia. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Panama, uh, Mexico, Brazil, uh, one to Canada, uh, one to Washington State, um, Texas, uh the sales for the 120 have been quite broad. Oh, uh, UK got one. Right. So the sales of it have been uh, broad, which is is what I like. Oh, by the way, it has a DUHLV approved exhaust as well. It's very quiet. Huh. Well, that's good, and it makes your life a lot easier if people aren't calling up with all kinds of problems. So, from what I understand, it's been pretty quiet, and people are figuring it out and, and doing well on their own. Very, very good. And, and what we're doing now with all of our motors is, as you're aware, we sell a lot of motors outside or paramotors outside the U.S. And that business is picking up. Uh, uh, for the first time, we've actually penetrated the German and French market, which is which really? is good. Good, um, good. Yes. Um, but what we're doing on all motors now, no matter what motor it is, we are test running every motor that goes outside the U.S. Um, oh, we ship three. 120s to uh, Puerto Rico. Two, wow. I think three to Puerto Rico itself. But uh, they're showing up already, you know, adjusted within a, a reasonable range and and uh, ready to go. Right. You know what's neat about that is you get a little nucleus of people and they start to bring in some more people and so on. And you know, it's been that way in Mexico. We had uh, you know, a few Mexican pilots that uh, I trained the first few of them that you know in northern Baja. And actually, there was uh, um, one one guy. I'm blanking the name, but he now they just sent me a picture. There's like there's 30 of them, and they're they're uh, they just had a big fly in this past week, and so it's it's kind of cool to get into these new areas and 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 build up uh, you know a following. So yeah, I guess there's quite a few paratoys gear there at uh, Copper Canyon. Uh, mm -hmm. She's out there, hi Kathy. Uh, flying uh, her quad, MZ-34. I think she weighs like 125 pounds. <laughs> yeah, MZ-34 with a low boy two quad with an orange momentum glider. Uh, I got a picture sent to me of her flying right up near a hot air, one of the big hot air balloons. All right. And uh, I understand that Dave Jewell took her quad and flew over the canyon itself, apparently perhaps the second person to have flown over that canyon. I, I right. guess it's like 5,000 feet straight down and is 8,800 feet. Wow. And uh, you he know, called me and says, hey, I just flew the low boy for the first time and with the MZ-34, and uh, this is what I did. And he says it was fantastic. Wow. It ran, That's great. ran beautiful. You know, one thing we forgot to mention, and we're down to our last minute here, is fuel economy. Is that 120 it's, gets a crazy good fuel economy. Well, let's look at it this way. When I go out, and if it's got a quarter tank in it, I go fly it. All right. That's great. It's a and miser that, on yeah. fuel. Yeah, and that's great. You don't have to fill it up all the way, and that really counts for lightness, too. You know, If you're going to fly for 45 minutes, put less fuel in it. That's great. Okay, um, we got to take a break. Uh, I'm Michael Purdy. We're here with Mike Robinson at WorldPPG.com. Uh, <laughs> World uh, we'll be right back.